Well, hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Now, I recently did a review of uh, one of these radio-controlled tough solar watches from Casio, and I neglected to give a, an in-depth explanation of what tough solar is. So I thought, in case anyone out there just wants to know that much, let me tell you a little bit about tough solar. What it basically means is there's a solar cell built into the face of the watch, and it's, it's meant to charge up the battery inside the watch automatically with exposure to just everyday lighting conditions. Now, if you have an especially low uh, charge on your battery, you can stick it in the sun. I would recommend maybe uh, not in a car, but maybe set it near a window at your office or uh, on the backyard patio furniture in the sunshine, give it a little boost that way. But once it's fully charged, it should remain sufficiently charged just with, uh, you know, just whatever everyday lighting conditions that you live in and work in. If you're wearing long sleeves and you've covered up the watch, you know, that's going to prevent it from charging itself or, or things like that. Uh, some people, you know, they're concerned. They say, well, I want a tough solar watch, but what if I take it off and I stick it in a drawer for like six months at a time? Is, is that bad? And I'd have to say, well, without getting too too blunt, maybe a solar powered watch is not the right watch for you if you think you're going to just leave it in drawers for six months at a time. Maybe if you're not going to use it, you could leave it out on the countertop or, you know, on a shelf or, or somewhere where it might get exposure to everyday lighting conditions rather than, come on, stick it in a drawer. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend that. And I think that for proper maintenance of your uh, battery inside your watch, it's, it's best to try to keep it uh, charged as much as you can. So I would recommend if you're not going to use it, maybe get one of these cases like, uh, you know, my wife got me a bunch of these with a, with a glass top. So you can leave this and it's a nice little jewelry case and you can fill it full of watches. You can get this in different sizes. You know, this one holds six watches. Get one that holds 10 watches or 12 watches or 24 watches and just uh, find a nice place for it uh, on your dresser or whatever and it'll, it'll get enough light to, to keep the thing going. So when I say tough solar, I'm talking about a solar cell in the watch. So the, the idea is you'd have maintenance free power on the watch for years and years. Now I can show you the first tough solar watch I ever bought was this one and I bought it 14 years ago and so far so good. I've never had to replace the battery on this. I've never had to open it up for any reason at all. So as far as the power, a completely maintenance free watch. And so people ask me kind of a follow up to that. Well then, uh, how long will that battery last? Because even rechargeable batteries wear out eventually. You'll have to replace it. How long is that going to take? And I can tell you, I don't really know. 14 years surprises me a little bit that it's been that long, but I'm just going to keep it going. Uh, now, a word of caution, if you want to replace the battery in your watch, um, just be careful about it. See, I've, I've seen some comments from people that maybe they took their watch to a jeweler and had the jeweler uh, change the, the battery inside the watch and they put in the wrong battery. See, most of these watches, so most of the watches I've had since the early 1980s use these, these lithium batteries, you know, just these kind of button cell batteries. Like, uh, let me just show you here. This is a potential watch battery and this is a nickel, okay? Just about the same size. These lithium batteries come in different sizes. So here's one, it's a, it's a 1216. This is a 1616. This one here is a, a, a 2032, which is actually a pretty common battery. They use these in uh, garage door openers. The first two digits of these numbers refer to the diameter in millimeters. So this is a 2032 battery, so 20 millimeters across. And the second two numbers refer to the thickness. So uh, 2032, it's 3.2 millimeters thick. So here's a 2016 battery that I haven't used yet. It's the same diameter, but a different thickness. So you want to make sure you get the right thing for your watch. And when it comes to these, you want to make sure that it's a rechargeable battery. Now, some people have corrected me and said, it's actually a capacitor. Okay, maybe so. I, I, I'm not going to get that deep into it. But what, what you need to know, the difference between a battery and a capacitor is the way they store the power. But in everyday usage, um, especially with these watches, really, we don't have to worry about the difference. What you really need to worry about is the way, uh, the, the way you, you, you obtain the replacement battery, you get the right kind. So like uh, maybe a, a watch that I have 
that's not rechargeable, uh, not, not, uh, not a solar powered watch might be this one. It uses a 2016 lithium battery, but this one uses, uh, and, and the model number on this is CR2016, okay? This one uses a CTL1616 battery. So CTL different from CR. So if you're gonna replace the battery in this one, you wanna make sure you get a CTL1616 battery. Find out, you know, make sure you get the right one. And even a professional jeweler might not know. If you put a battery in here that's not rechargeable, and then the watch tries to charge it because it thinks it's using a rechargeable battery, you're gonna maybe mess up the battery and the watch and maybe both of them. Now, I've heard people say, well, I, I had my jeweler put in a non-rechargeable battery and also, uh, you know, we, we, we shorted out a little something there so that it would no longer uh, try to charge. I'm not gonna get that deep into it either. I'm not gonna try to modify the watch so that it won't charge the battery and then start putting a different battery in. Really, um, I'm just gonna replace it with the correct battery that it came with. And one more thing to, to, to keep in mind when you do that, or when a jeweler does that, um, well, you're opening up the, the back of the watch maybe for the first time in many, many years. So you wanna make sure before you put it all together again, that the seal that's holding the back of the watch in place is in good condition. So just, again, something to keep in mind if it's do-it-yourself or if you take it to a jeweler. So again, when it comes to battery replacement, just be careful. I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video to a video someone else made, someone who sells in their business the, the, the proper replacement battery for this watch. And also they've got a video that shows you how to do it. All right, so I'm gonna, if, if that's what you wanna do, they give you all the instructions and you could even buy the battery from them if you want to or from someone else. And I'll just give you again that link so you can watch that video and see how it's done. I still haven't decided when it's time for me to start replacing old batteries or capacitors in these tough solar watches if I'm gonna try and do it myself or take it to a jeweler. I don't know, I'll probably do it myself, but I think that will still be many, many years off before I have to do that. And one more note about a rechargeable watch. Okay, uh, I, have, I have several kinds, some are analog, some are digital or a combination that, that all use Casio's tough solar technology to charge themselves. Uh, Citizen also offers the, the same technology. They call it EcoDrive. So there's a solar cell, again, in their watches that, that charge up the power source inside. So depending on you know, what manufacturer it is, if it's, a, if it's a Citizen watch, it's gonna be called EcoDrive. If it's a Casio watch, that feature is called Tough Solar and other manufacturers will have other ideas for that. You know, it's not that unusual to think of small electronic devices that use solar cells for their, uh, for their power source. Uh, here's, you know, here's a calculator that I got several years ago. It has a little solar cell here on the front and it also, it also has a battery inside of it. So whether you're in uh, well-lit conditions or not, I just turn it on and, and there it goes. Same with this, oh, this happens to be a, a Casio calculator, it does the same thing. Here's one that uh, my wife got a long, long time ago. And uh, this one actually does not have a separate battery inside. I can try to use this little calculator, and this is cute, it looks like a credit card, it's thin, uh, just a nice, simple calculator. But if I'm using it, and I punch in some numbers here, and then I put my finger over the solar cell and block that out, well, look at that. The display went blank, so there's no backup here if you don't have enough light. Uh, it didn't go completely out because uh, the, the numbers came back up as soon as I uh, took my finger off the solar cell. But again, this technology has is, is been around for a long time. It's proven itself, and uh, Casio has been using it for, well, at least 14 years, and I've, I've had some good experience there. So again, look for that. It's a, I think it's a proven technology, and you can rely on it. Uh, just in many years from now, when it's time to change that power source out, refresh that battery, just be careful. And uh, with that, I'll say please join me again in another new upcoming soon episode of The Good Timekeeping Show.